Hey, it's Monday night, and hopefully you've digested your Thanksgiving meal by now. If you haven't eaten the leftovers by now, throw them out. Good idea. Well, tonight on the show, we've got Roy Samuelson in our studio. There he is. He's going to be Very right. punctual man. Right. Got to love it. Very nice. And, uh, and we're going to talk about how to maintain your career in voiceover. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's hard enough just starting it, but we'll talk about how to maintain it and all the different things that he's done yeah. to make him the amazingly successful A-lister that he is today. Sweet. Uh, we've got some tech stuff. Yeah, I'll come up with something. That's good to know. And we've got a couple of questions from our audience uh, to help you with your home voiceover studio. So where are you going? Stay right here. It's VoiceOver Body Shop. Coming up now. Two men, twin sons from different mothers, with a passion for voiceover recording technology and the desire to make recording easy for voice actors everywhere. Together in one place. George Whittem, the home studio engineer to the stars, a Virginia Tech grad with an unmatched knowledge of all the latest gear and technology in voiceover today. Dan Leonard, the home studio master, a voice actor with over 30 years experience in broadcasting and recording, and a no holds barred myth busting attitude for teaching you how easy it is. Together, to bring you all the latest technology, today's voiceover superstars and leading the discussion on how to make the most of your voiceover business. This is VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products. Source Elements, remote connections made even easier. VO2GoGo.com, everything you need to be a successful voiceover artist. J. Michael Collins Demos, award-winning demo production. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voiceover website won't be a pain in the butt. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live from their super-secret multimedia studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Good evening. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or V-O-B-S. Yes. All righty. Well, one down, a pile of things to go. <laughs> yeah. De December's a busy month in the Leonard household. Yeah. Things you know. get crazy from here on out. Yeah. For example, today is Marcy and mine's anniversary, 24th anniversary. Yay! Happy yeah. anniversary. Yes. Yeah. Interesting. You know, we... We almost bought the same card for each other. <laughs> you mean that means you're probably meant for each other? Yeah, or point. we're shopping at the same store. And uh, <laughs> but interestingly, in you know, on our own personal notes, we essentially wrote the same thing. Aw. So I I guess we finally figured it out. Sounds like it. Yes, and then her birthday is December fifth. Mm. Hanukkah starts actually this Sunday. Holy smokes! And then my birthday is on the twenty eighth. So <laughs> okay. talk about pressure. Yeah. Through, like, you know, from Thanksgiving on. It's, and there's just general Christmas stuff happening. All the holiday parties. It's it's worth at least five pounds, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's starting last week. But uh, thank you for coming over for Thanksgiving dinner. It that was, was very pleasant. It was very nice. Friendsgiving yeah. is always pleasant. I, it was fun. I got to go see you guys and then go to a completely different place with a bunch of millennial-type people. Yeah, and <laughs> that was not us. Well, I mean, there were... and uh, it was a it was a lovely day. Yeah, it was a lovely day. It was great. I hope we you had a great Thanksgiving out there and a nice relaxed weekend. But now it's time to get back to work. It and is. That's what we do here at Voiceover Body Shop. Uh, we got Roy Samuelson tonight. Mm -hmm. Going to talk to us about all sorts of cool stuff that he does and how you can do it too. Uh, and we'll uh, we've got tech. We've got all sorts of stuff. But we, as we always start off, it's time for Voice Over Body Shop presents the VOBS Voice Over Extra News. All the information you need for a successful voiceover career. And now the Voice Over Extra News for November 26th. Year end checklist. So, how is your voiceover business performance this year? 
Yeah, we can see you all cringing out there, but let's not wait till New Year's Eve to get record-keeping in order. And plan ahead by taking stock of what worked this year and what didn't. Oh, by the way, it's my turn. To the rescue is our perennial list maker, Dave Cavassier. In an article now on voiceoverextra.com, Dave eases this process for us with five crucial voiceover business things to consider now. One, cash flow and bookkeeping. Do you dread this? Yes. yes. Get on it. Get your invoicing up to date and enter all the debit and credit items that are piling up on your desk. I never have trouble with the invoicing. It's the expenses that are the problem. Yeah, same here. Plus, have you called your accountant lately to check on tax law changes to prepare for? Because there are a lot of them right now. It's amazing. Two, set a budget for next year. When your record keeping is up to date, study it. See where you overspent, made good investments, and decide what financial efforts to continue or drop. Three. Uh, three. Three. Take a breath. Take stock. Schedule a time to step back and reflect on your career. What's going right? What's deficient? Need to change something to get to the next level? Four. Review the calendar. This past year has been packed with pretty good-sized voiceover conferences. What did you attend? And what do you want to hit next year? Plan now on that allotment of time and, of course, money. And, of course, you can adjust as the dates draw near, but set your priorities now. Stuff's coming up fast. Yeah. Five, revamp your business plan. What? You don't have a business plan? Dave admits that after 12 years of freelancing voiceover, he still doesn't have a business plan, but it's on his to-do list now. If you do have a plan, dust it off and update it. Today, are you where you wanted to be when you wrote that plan? What needs to change? And Dave gives us an honorable mention. Goals. Most of us operate better when we have stated goals and steps to achieve them. You'll see more details in the article, plus hundreds more for your voiceover success. Check this site daily. That's voiceoverextra.com. Mm -hmm. you know, and when it comes to business plans, yeah. this is a great book. The One Page Business Plan by Jim Horan for Creatives. Very cool. It's an entrepreneur's toolkit. You know, I'm, I've been using this. And actually, I was talking to Corbo this morning. I said, do you have this? He mm -hmm. goes, I do. And I have the video and I have all that. Have you done it yet? <laughs> well, no. Well, neither have I. But it's like it's like a workbook. You get to color it in and everything. Yeah, it's, it's not cool. very intimidating. It's not a very thick no. book. Yes, but this is for the creative entrepreneur. Check it out. Very cool. I, I just wish Mr. Haran knew I just did that. Free for endorsement him. for you, Mr. Yes. Haran. Well, when it's good, we got to bring it up. Yes. So, what's up in tech this week? Well, of course, it's Cyber Monday here in oh, the yeah. United States, and uh, who cares? <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, uh, unless you're out shopping for 4K TVs, one for the dog's room, I guess, at this point. <laughs> They're I mean, that how, affordable. How many freaking 4K TVs do you have at this point in your house? I actually don't have any. I have one seven year old. Sony Bravia. That's right. still amazingly good. When do you have time to watch TV anyway? I watch YouTube. Oh, okay. I come home, I put my feet up, and I watch YouTube videos. <laughs> I watch that more than anything. But honestly, I'm looking around at what's out there on sale right now. And yeah, of course, there's some gear for sale. But you know, these deals, they kind of come up year round. And when you're a savvy shopper, I'm not seeing anything. There's no real door busters in the world of pro audio. Really. Right. I mean, you know, there's what we might call a loss leader item that shows up in the Guitar Center catalog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. mic cables. Yeah. yeah. There's <laughs> buy be, five. Yeah, buy know. five at five dollars each. You know, there's mm -hmm. whatever. It's it's almost like it's plug in Monday actually, because it seems like all the good <laughs> deals are really plug ins. Yeah. You know, forty five percent off this. Everybody get in line and get your train your ears EQ training software. Actually, now that I think about it, that's actually kind of interesting. Of all the do things tell. I'm seeing on here, this one looks like it could be useful because I do get a lot of folks who um, ask me. And by the way, I'm, I'm finding these on pro-tools-expert.com, which isn't just about Pro Tools. It's a lot of stuff in audio. But um, this could be interesting. A lot of people that, I, that consult with me on how to set up their gear, they want to know how it is that we do what we do. 
They want to know how to train their ear, their hearing, to be better able to determine what sounds good, what doesn't sound good. What year is it? It's 2018. Mm -hmm. See, I started this in 1975. Mm -hmm. It takes a couple of weeks, guys. Yeah, you, gotta, you have time. to tune your ears, and then you have to adjust for all the rock and roll that you listened to during the 80s and 90s, you know, and adjust for that. But there's a way it's supposed to sound. Yeah, I mean, this this one is about EQ. So if you're wondering how the heck it is that, you know, I can listen to something and go, hey, a little bit too much 500, let's drop, drop that, or let's, let's roll it off at 80 and give it a little 8K, blah, blah, blah. If you want to know what the heck all that means... Something like this could be useful to you, and it's called Train Your Ears, one word. And they have a coupon code is CYBER for 45% off. That looks actually useful. Of all the other stuff that's on this site, most of the things I'm seeing are synthesizer plugins and just general mayhem for that'll get you in a lot of trouble. If, yeah, if you're not, make it if dangerous. You're not a, if you're not a producer, <laughs> you know, these things, I was just over at Jack Daniels' place. Yeah. Jack, you're watching right now, I hope. He is. <laughs> the number of plugins he had on that system would blow your mind. But to be honest, that's something that he finds fun. You know, that's, that's a that, hobby. That's a well hobby as, for him. Exactly. It's, it's a hobby as well as it is part of his career. But at the end of the day, to get the most out of those plugins... He had me and he had Carson and a couple people he know dial in those plugins because you can have all the amazing tools in the world, but it ain't going to make you build a house. Right. You, know, you can have a great, shiny, beautiful hammer. It ain't going to make you drive nails neatly and do good framing. Right. A lot you of know? people talk about getting the uh, the Arrow or the, the Apollo Twin sure. because it has all those plugins. Right. But, you know, from my point of view... None of those plugins are going to get you work, kids. It's simply a matter of recording it right in the first place and let the plugins be done by the people who professionally use plugins. You've um, heard the mantra. Yes. <laughs> Unless, of course, you're, said you're, a you're a full production guy doing commercials and soundtracks for the next Russell Crowe movie. Um, you know, it, it, it's fun to learn what they do and, and how they affect your sound. Right. But... Is it effective, say, for your auditions and stuff like that? Yeah. So uh, in terms of what's going on in the Cyber Monday deals and all that stuff, I do have one of my own. And we'll mention that later in the show. Okay. But um, it's it's really at the time to take stock in what you already have. Budget for next year. Because I'm just speaking from experience. It's very easy to get lulled into this. Well, you know, October was a good month. November was a really good month. It's really easy to, to get some of that money to rattle loose. And that's why that last story we did was so important because it makes you realize, wow, I could I could buy this thing now, or I could prepare for next year, or I could put a little bit of money aside for taxes, or I could buy that plane ticket for my daughter to come see me, which I did today. She's coming in January. That's a priority. That's a priority. And I and I also while the other day while I was riding my bike, the last week or two I bought a couple things for myself. I bought a I bought a, a fitness watch. Never had one of these before. And then I was riding my bike the other day, and I literally said as a mantra, do not buy anything more for yourself <laughs> this year. Do not buy anything more for yourself this year. Because it's like I want to set everything else aside for loved ones, for the holidays, and planning ahead. So, um, you know, it's just basically if you're looking for tools and toys, check in with Dan or I first. You know, see what's actually missing in your studio. See what it is that technically can be improved or acoustically be improved right. before you get lulled into buying some kind of crazy super mega deal on some product that probably is going to be available at a very similar price other times of the year and sometimes av available for f for a discount when it's in a refurbished or used uh, state, which is a way I buy a lot of my things as well. All righty. Well, you've heard it there, and that's the way it is. <laughs> That's the way it truly is. All righty. Well, we've got uh, Roy Samuelson coming up, mm -hmm. and we've got questions from you, our amazing audience. Thank goodness. With all those amazing questions you have about your home voiceover studio coming up right after this. Yep, this is VOBS, proven anybody can have a show these days. Wow, this is VOBS? In a world of audio, two men knew what they were doing, or at least they have you convinced. They put the BS and VOBS.TV. 
The one voiceover question no one wants to talk about is, how much work do you get? And the reason is, no one books as much as they want. You audition all the time, and your booking rate is never high enough, and you don't have a clue what to do about it. Well, I've got some great news. Mark your calendar on December 3rd, just a little bit next Monday. VO2GoGo is going to help you change all of that. David H. Lawrence the 17th is going to offer an amazing free class starting that Monday for the next week called the VO Booking Blueprint. He'll share with you eight, yes, eight, I got it right, effective and proven ways to increase your booking rate and how to do so instantly. It's always the big elephant in the room. How much are you booking? How much money are you making? This is all, it's all worth it. How would you like to raise the bar on all of that? Stay tuned. vo to go will have some great training for you on how to up your game with the VO Booking Blueprint. It's coming December 3rd, all from vo 2 gogocom Everything you need to be a successful voiceover artiste. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. And we're back here on VoiceOver Body Shop. And... As we head headlong into December, mm -hmm. into the pit of the holidays, <laughs> or the yeah. hilltop of the holidays, or the meadow of the holidays. I love this Which is backdrop. right back there somewhere. Yeah. Is that the meadow? Of the, it looks like it. It's a very good Thanksgiving picture back there. Yeah, I thought so. That was from my uh, ride yesterday up in Mount Pinos. Nice. Beautiful, beautiful area. Yeah. Gorgeous. Did you make it all the way? I well, I, I we we cheated. We took a car. We actually <laughs> oh, did what we self shuttled. So we had a car with three people. Yeah, we'd all ride up, drive up, and yeah. then two rides down. One drives down, picks us up. But we did that four times. I did it four times. Wow. Each one was about twenty four hundred feet of drop. It was fun <sighs> yeah. until I blew out my tire. That was interesting. Did Did you happen to hit the pavement while doing that? No, I was on dirt, and I yeah. never hit the dirt. I was very lucky. Yes, very lucky. for once. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. Well, we've got a couple of questions from our amazing audience out there across the world. Uh, and the first one uh, is from Stephen Knight. He says, hello, Dan and George. He got it right. Wanted to wish you both the happiest of holidays and great good fortune for the new year 2019. A quick question for Dan. That would be me. On the show with Mark Cashman, you were berating the loss of your precious Fios. Well, that was like three years ago. <laughs> it was. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're catching up there, Steve. Uh, hey, these shows are evergreen. You ever, know? They're always there. All over, almost 400 episodes. Well, some of them are more brown than That's, green. Yeah. But, you know, we do our best. Watch episode number one, and you know what we're talking about. Uh, uh, let's see. Yeah, we lost Fios, and I had to go to something different. He said, uh, would you actually choose Fios over other IPs like cable? Well, Fios is cable. ISPs, like internet service providers? Thank yeah. you. Yes. Uh, have you tried any others? I'm going to be updating my provider, and Fios and cable are available to me. And guys, keep doing what you're doing. I haven't heard any complaints, you know. Best wishes, mm. Stephen Knight. Yeah. Thank you, Stephen. Well, yeah, um, it was kind of questionable because... Started with with Spectrum, it was Time Warner at the time, and then we decided to go to AT and T, which lasted about a week and a half. Uverse, yes, right? it didn't work. It just they could not figure it out, and we actually dumped cable, and now we just have internet with with Spectrum, and you know we've got you know a hundred up and fifty you know fifty down or something like that in here. 
No, you have 400 down. For, okay, it's 400 down. Yeah, about 20 up, 400 down. Yeah. Last time I measured it. Right, and you know, and it works fine mm-hmm. most of the time. That's what cable modems do. They give you massive download speeds. Right. Massive. And meh. Upload speeds. Right. 20 ain't bad. I mean, we do our show with that 20 megabits, and it's totally fine. Right. Like we have 20 is enough to do just about anything, short of maybe high, high-res 4K streaming. But everything we do fits over 20 megabytes of upload speed. It's just the difference between cable and Fios and fiber in general is with fiber, you're getting whatever the speeds are that they're telling you you're going to get, you get that within a very small percentage. It's very close to what they tell you, and it very rarely uh, varies. Right. Like if it's 50 up, 50 down, and that's the other thing. It's usually symmetrical, so it's 50 up and down. It pretty much stays that way, and that's why I like fiber over cable. Um, That's the big reason for me to choose Fios. And if you happen to be one of the rare areas of the country that has Fios available, I would snag it because fiber is still not pervasive. It's not everywhere at all. It might be on the pole, but it doesn't come (laughs) to your house. That's the problem. So if you can get it, get it. It's, I think it is worth it. Yeah. I, I, yeah, it definitely was, was fun having that back in Western New York, but uh, you know, I mean, we, like I said, we pulled the plug on cable. We still have internet cable. From our cable modem, but right. you know, I now I just have an antenna, and, you know, aimed towards Mount Wilson, and it gets everything, including every Vietnamese channel there is. <laughs> you know? We got four more questions. I could go on and on All about right, this. I will say one last thing: and that okay. is, if you have FiOS and cable in your area, the cable will be in, will be will be the best cable modem you've ever had. Get it if you can. And get it's it. because they have competition. Okay. Jack Degolia has a question of far advanced technology. Looking into the future, he says, is it possible to have two Mac minis connected to some kind of switching device and switch off which mini was displayed on the screen and controlled by the keyboard and trackpad? Ah! (laughs) Wow, what a concept, huh? Yes, you can, Jack. Look for something called a KVM, Keyboard Mm -hmm. Video Mouse Switcher. They've been around for a long, long time. Just make sure it's got the right ins and outs. It's going to have USB on it. It's going to have HDMI. Probably not much else. That's yeah. probably all it really needs to have on it. And by hitting a certain key keystroke twice, it, I haven't used one in years, but I think on mine you hit Alt two times, Alt right. Alt, and it would switch the switch the video. I wonder, like I wonder why Jack's using two Mac Minis and why he would need to change. He's a screen. mad Cause, scientist, cause he's Jack. That's <laughs> well, one. if you're doing video, you want to have one computer churning away on stuff and then your other one for, for voiceover. I, I could understand that. All righty. Uh, the lovely and talented Karen O'Brien asks, what's the best mic style for a travel rig? Shotgun or large diaphragm condenser or USB? Hmm. Well. Do you walk to school or carry your lunch? Or chew your gum, you know. This is, this is. If I have to, if I have to go on the road and I know I'm going to be doing something important, which I'll tell my clients, I'm going on the road. Leave me alone, and then you'll get something important. Of course, that's exactly while you're sitting there waiting to get on the plane. How Guaranteed. do you how do you get voiceover work? Make plane reservations, and then tell it's them without, and then tell them you're not available. That's right. Yeah, four sixteen, great road mic. It was built as a road warrior. It was. It's designed to be used in the field. It can handle right. temperature and humidity and all kinds of stuff. Right. That is really by far, to me, the best travel mic is a shotgun mic. Um, if you want to spend a lot less money, check out the Rode NTG4. Yep. Similar, not the same, but pretty darn close. Don't recommend large diaphragm mics. Really fragile. Right. You know, they don't travel that well. And USB, well, there's meh. The Epigee mic. There's a bunch of good USB yeah, mics now. It, yeah. They're, yeah but the, the Blue Raspberry. The Blue Red, a lot of people, people like, like it, and then it has some problems and stuff like that. So yeah, it's who knows? common among a two hundred dollar yeah. USB mic. Okay, you get to ask the team, you know, T Man's question. T Man, because I know what I want to say. And... Cool. What are the essential plugins for Audacity? Deessers, uh, compressors, etc. And he says what, and then Devox tags on. What are the best free VST plugins available? Uh, EQ compression. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what the best free VST plugins available are, and I'll tell you why. I use what comes with the DAW. So I'm using Audacity. I'm using what comes with Audacity. If I'm using Audition, I'm using what comes with Audition, with few exceptions. Some people really, of course, love the Isotope RX tools for specific noise issues they're dealing with. 
Um, in Audacity's world, it's a little bit more convoluted and confusing because they do provide a huge array of free plugins by this thing called Nyquist. Um, and so if, you, if A, you can find them, and B, figure out how to install them, um, you can get a few extra bells and whistles. They have one, I think, it, I think they call it the Gate or Gate, and the Gate Nyquist plugin is good because you can actually use it as an expander. Right. You need to know what the difference is to make the make even make use of this tool. But if you do know what the difference is, check that one out. That one I always add into the Audacity system. And for a free VST plugin, I can't name a whole list, but I'll name one, and that is um, Loudmax. That's a uh, limiter right. that runs on VST AU. Right. You can plug it into just about any software. Check out Loudmax, all one word. That's a great limiter. It works really well for mastering audiobooks or just generally punching up your levels. Um, that well, one just, I just a little bit. Yeah, that one I like. Okay, get Fred's voice. And our last question, George, you're talking about plugins, but I run my mic into my ID4 into my computer. That's it. I can do post in in uh, you know in aud in audition, but that's all. Do I need to look at going all Jack Daniel in my studio? Yes, yeah, so you must. If you don't, you're going to be a loser and lose jobs. No. No, that's not true no. at all. Um, like I said, Jack loves the tool. He loves the tools and the it's toys. His he hobby. loves the gear. It's... And he, he does actually he does promo pimp work his and... studio out. Right. He has people come in and you. Right. So having more impressive tools for studios that work more as a project or commercial studio is worth it. Um, if you're doing real-time recordings with I IPDTL, Source Connect, ISDN at, at all, and the uh, client on the other end expects you to be giving them audio that sounds pre-polished, that's a small niche of you out there that need to do that. It's really tiny. Yeah, I the mean, tip of the pin. Yeah. But if you are in that category, then having a thing like the Apollo that can run real-time processing is, is pretty useful. Um, otherwise, it's not needed. The ID4, Audient ID4 interface is a quality piece, very good sound quality, very low noise. And with Audition, you're, you got tools galore. You know, you can really get an amazing sound out of Adobe Audition using its built-in plugins. Yeah, um, and it's amazing. I mean, everything yeah. you could possibly need, especially in post, and it's better to do it in post than in pre because once it's there, it's there it's fully forever. Baked. It's fully baked. So can't undo. You can't undo, when undo you, it. So when you print the effects, they're they're there for good. Oops. Mm -hmm. You do an oops like oh undo. Got a lot of like oh I lost part of my word because the gate was the threshold was wrong and my gain wasn't right and it didn't match the threshold and adjust the gain back structure into the booth blah, blah, with you blah, blah, blah. and re-record that. Yeah. Okay. Well, as you can hear, uh, Mr. Whitham and I are the guys that know this stuff better than anybody else because we've done it longer than anybody else. And if you want help with your home studio, if you have no idea what you're doing, you can talk to us because we can teach you from the beginning to the end. And it being Cyber Monday, I know that you have a special going on over at georgethetech.com. I was almost going to not do a special this year, to be completely. I was going to just kind of blow it off. And this morning I was sitting there looking at the site and I just kind of had FOMO. I actually had fear of missing out of offering a special deal like everybody else. So I decided to do it. So if you book a service on my website, this does not include all the self-service stuff like the stacks and racks. But if you book a consult with me that's on the phone or, or remote or on per, in person, when you check out, you can use coupon code GTT2018EOY, which is end of year. Uh, wow. That's that's my uh, end of the year deal. Now that is that that coupon expires on December second, but you can book your services up to three months in advance. So you can book something in the middle of January, February, even if that date isn't really set in stone. No big deal. You can change it later, but that gets you in the books. That gets the service booked. You know what? Book a first of the year tune up for your studio, so you start the year off already in the calendar a booking to get your studio cleaned up for the new year. Maybe that's not a bad idea. Okay. GeorgeTheTech.com. Right. And if you'd like to work with me, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you're getting a deal with me anyway. That's right. So, you know, if go over to HomeVoiceOverStudio.com. We can book a consult and uh, I can help you get up and running. Uh, or if you'd like to li have me listen to your audio, send me a sample in my specimen collection cup. Of audio. Of audio. 
and we'll give it a listen, and we will uh, see what needs to be done, if anything. Mm-hmm. Hey, and, there's not always something needs to be done. No, it's like people did, think like did a great there's going to be something wrong. If it's nothing wrong, we're going to tell you nothing's wrong. Absolutely. All righty. Roy Samuelson is waiting by very patiently, and uh, we're going to talk to him about all sorts of cool stuff. So don't go away. We'll be right back here on Voice Over Body Shop. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. V-O-B-S dot TV. Well, I'm here to tell you about Source Elements, the tool that you're going to use to get connected to studios around the world. The ones that want to book you and direct you real time and record you real time. That's the situation you're running into when you want to use something like Source Connect from Source Elements. This software you install in your computer. It can be run standalone as its own application or it can act as a plug-in if you're the studio and you need to record the other end. It's a really great tool because it integrates into your system workflow really, really well. Um, you can get a demo of Source Connect standard, the standard version, which really is all voice actors need. You, you really don't need the pro version for voice acting specifically. It's got really all the most important tools built in that you would need. Go get a demo. You don't have to even have a USB iLock key to run this software now. You can get it going on your Mac or Windows machine. You head over to source-elements.com and get a 15-day free trial and just get your get used to using it, get your account set up, your username, and all that kind of stuff. Buy it if you're ready. Don't if you're not. Just make sure you're ready to use it. You can also subscribe. You can, you can just pay in a monthly fee, and that way... It spreads out the cost of using Source Connect. You know, it makes it a little bit less dear to get started. But that's what the beauty of it. You can rent it, you can buy it, or you can pay a monthly fee. It's up to you. So go check it out at source-elements.com and tell them when we sent you. We'd really appreciate it. And we'll be right back here in the studio with Dan and Sam right after this. Are you confused about how to set up and maintain a professional quality voiceover studio? No wonder. The information out there is mostly mythology. This is the best microphone to use. You have to have a preamp. You need a soundproof booth. This software is the best. Your audio must be broadcast quality. Consult with someone who knows the truth. Someone who's been there in the trenches doing voiceover for over 30 years. Someone with unparalleled experience with voiceover studios who's worked with hundreds of voice actors and designed hundreds of personal studios. He knows how to teach and cares about your success in one of the harshest environments known to voiceover, your home. Dan Leonard, the home studio master. Separate myth from fact and get a handle on your personal voiceover studio. Contact the home studio master at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Guess what? You know you know Roy Samuelson. You just don't know him. Turn on the TV, radio, or listen to an audiobook or play or play a video game, and more than likely you'll hear his familiar velvety vocal skills. Samuelson's work includes promos for Target and McDonald's, a myriad of TV shows, working with actors John La Raquette and Jessica Lang, and blockbusters like Skyscraper and Get Out. But Samuelson's true passion is helping people, and he does that by recording DR, Descriptive Narration for the Blind and Visually Impaired. And let's talk about all sorts of the cool stuff that he does in his career. Let's welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop, Roy Samuelson. Hey, how's it going, Dan? Good nice, to see you. Nice to have you here today. Nice to be here. Yeah. You're, you're like in the neighborhood, aren't you? I sure am. Okay, I sure good. Am. <laughs> People can like ride their bike over here. It's uh, it's a great thing it's about a, it's a, having another studio bike here. reference today. I love that. Yeah. So you you do an awful lot of stuff. You had to get there somehow. Where where are you from originally, and how did you get into voiceover? Uh, I came from Pennsylvania. Okay, so that, that was covers uh, a lot of ground. Yeah, I we, mean, uh, let's, let's narrow it down a little bit. I came from a small town in central Pennsylvania. Isn't that I, a great place to be from? Anyway? It sure is, George. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, I lived in Pittsburgh for a few years, and um, I worked down in uh, Disney, uh, Florida, for uh, on and off a few semesters here and there. Doing tours or literally tours. It was within the Great Movie Ride. God rest its soul. Mm-hmm. Uh, so one of those. Uh, do you remember that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's kind of like a, a little tour where I had a mic and I would 
point out all the different things that were happening, and then audio animatronics would talk, and people would get blown up. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, a tour, being a tour guide is great because <laughs> yes. you can you can really just like do whatever you want, especially if no one if, if your boss isn't watching. It's like you can, <laughs> yes, of course. I'm sure at Disney there was a very strict. Sk- I they're script probably that, watching it. Disney. They were watching it. Disney. <laughs> okay. They were watching. Darn. Yeah, yeah iPhone's got nothing on Disney. Yeah. So what brought you out here? Uh, it was time to go. I lived in, I went to Florida and then came back to uh, Pennsylvania and I stayed in Pittsburgh for a, a few years on a, a, a tour, a, a theater tour. And then too much slush. It was too much slush. It was time to get out. I have uh, some family that was in Southern California in uh, San Diego. And that was my intention was to drive cross country and halfway across the country plans changed a little bit. So uh, it's time to go to LA. All right. And well, when was that? It was many years ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. When was that? It was 96. Wow. Okay. So you've been out here a long time. Yeah, it's flown by. You're now yeah. an honorary local. Am I, though? Really? Yeah. Can I? You're officially <laughs> do, wait a minute. Do you, do you complain about the weather on a regular basis? Oh. Oh. Yeah? Yeah. Is that the test? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. boy. Yeah. yeah. Isn't there that thing that, like, after every 10 years, all your, all your cells kind of regenerate? Something like that, Something isn't like that, that right? Every yeah. cell. I'm not sure re- what the details are, but you've, I'm sure you've it's... been replaced with SoCal cell. <laughs> SoCal cell. <laughs> yes. I like that. Yeah, my blood hasn't quite thinned yet. It's like 55. It's a tropical day. Yeah, it's got a few years concerned. left. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I jacket on. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you, you, so you got it going. How'd you get? You know, from being an actor and doing that kind of stuff, really to getting directly into voiceover. Uh, voiceover has always been a part. Um, even back in in school and in college, I was a part of the radio station there, and at the Disney job too. It was a microphone, so right. it was it's on stage performance, but you still had to work with the mic. Uh, when I moved to LA, there was definitely a lot of uh, acting classes and improv classes and such, and it was time to go to the. Um, how do I say this? It. I had an opportunity to to go to a voiceover workout group and it really caught my attention. And so I went and then I went again and went again. And after a few years, uh, it just seemed like that was something that I needed to continue. Mm -hmm. Did you have your own voiceover workout group? Did you start your own? (laughs) Uh, I was, I was, when I started, I was a part of someone else's and uh, I did have a little get together that uh, I made up the acronym voiceover workout lounge, vowel. And that was, uh, very good. Yeah, it was a little hard to pronounce. You guys had somebody who named hair salon for you. It's <laughs> valid. Yeah, exactly. But that was a great way to get to know people that I wasn't able to to meet before. And just to be able to talk to them on behalf of this workout group instead of on behalf of, oh, I'm a voice actor. It, right. That I, I'm not sure if you've experienced that, but my experience was, oh, the, it, it, I was representing something else, so I didn't have to have the spotlight on me. It was on something else. And so they... It, it, not that it was more authentic, but it was a different kind of conversation. Right. So you've been you've been very successful. I mean, you, you're doing promos, you're doing commercials, you're doing video games, you're doing animation, you're doing all sorts of stuff. How do you how do you maintain that? I mean, what what has been what was I won't say your secret sauce for doing that, but what do you attribute your ability to really spread out in so many different directions oh, and maintain boy. that? What a great question. There's uh and thank you for saying so. That's uh, it, it's, I, I, I'm almost in disbelief hearing it. Uh, that means you've arrived. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a process. <laughs> it's definitely a process. There's a few things. I think one of the most important things to me, there's many more, I'm going to say three or four things. The first thing that comes to mind is the team. There's obviously the agent and the manager but there's also other people. It's the it's the networking that I do, not just with people that can hire me, but other people that are actually doing similar things than I do. And by talking with them on how they've solved some problems that I'm having or uh, vice versa, we can we we can really share and bring the entire community up, if that makes sense. Right. So the team is really important. Um, the other uh, another thing that I think means a lot to me right now is um, mindset. There's a book by Carol Dweck. I love that last name. And she talks about two different perspectives of, of mindset, a, a fixed mindset and a growth mindset. A uh, quick example with the fixed mindset is someone who believes that they were born with talent and that talent is fixed and it's always going to be there. And a growth mindset comes with a more curious place. Like, what can I do a little differently? What's something that maybe I could improve a little bit? Maybe I could learn something. Uh, and by focusing on that, growth mindset 
that alone can help skyrocket pretty much anything. Was that your attitude when you first started doing it? Was that like, were you thinking that or was it more of an evolutionary sort of thing? <laughs> it's absolutely evolutionary. <laughs> Ironically, it's, that's getting kind of meta that I ev evolutionized my, my growth mindset. But yeah, I, I think there was a sense when I, and when I first started of, oh, I'm, I'm good or I'm, I've done this. So that means that I've, I've been this, but that really didn't serve me at all. That got, that got me not even nowhere fast. That was the reverse. It, it, it took me away from where I wanted to go. Right. So if, how, does that make sense? It, it does. But how did you move yourself into getting representation and moving yourself up into some of the, the higher echelons of our business? I think there's a, again, back to the team and the networking. I think there's something about uh, putting uh, putting it out there. You know, there could be some really great talented people in central Pennsylvania or somewhere in the, anywhere outside of the, the main areas where people think of voiceover happening. Uh, by getting out and meeting people, you know, earlier you were mentioning all the different um, uh, conferences that had happened this year. That's a great way to network. Online, there's hundreds of different groups on, on different social media that you can network with and learn from. Right. I think it's really exciting. Yeah. And you did it really before <laughs> social networking or, uh, or, you know, our social media. It's called the uh, long way. Yeah. But, but you started, you, you, you joined a workout group. Yes. Uh, clearly it's, I mean, there's the workout and then there's meeting the people that are there. Yes. You know, there's meeting the coach who hopefully will have some connections somewhere and then other people who have connections and, you know, you learn from each other. And, but of course, other voice actors don't hire voice actors. So how did you move beyond that? Was How did the networking work for you to, to actually start finding some work? Gotcha. Um, it definitely was uh, another evolution. There's, there's a short-sighted and a long-term perspective when it comes to the networking. I think we're talking about that. Uh, some of the people that I thought would hire me are now some of my best friends who have never hired me. It's fascinating. Hmm. And other people that I've just happened to come across and said, hey, you know, could we exchange numbers and maybe we'll have a coffee or two over the last five or six years and a phone call comes through someone that was referred by that person. There's no rhyme or reason. There's no specific way that things happen. But uh, one of the things that I've always remembered, and I'm sure there's a voice actor that said this <laughs> uh, many, many times, many years ago that, uh, the agent gets paid 10% and you get paid 90. So you do 90% of the work and that's, maybe that works, maybe that doesn't, but it is my responsibility to, to carry my career forward and not twiddle my thumbs and wait for the audition to come through. Right. So you go out and find your own work. I mean, or is everything you rely completely on your agent? <laughs> it's, uh, I don't think it's that clean. I think there's a lot of things that Obviously, I get auditions from my agent and managers, and uh, there's things that I send them. And there's an opportunity that I hear about, and I say, oh, um, great. Is it okay if I pass this on to my agent? I'd love for them to know. And that helps them out, the person that I'm talking to, because my agent can negotiate on my behalf. It helps the agency out. It helps me out. It's a win-win-win for everybody. And that, that's, the most, that's the most exciting. I love when that collaboration happens. Uh, and that's, that's, that's fascinating to hear because, you know, if you've got a good agent and somebody who really believes in you, that, that really helps a whole lot in getting your career going. But getting that agent is not easy. I mean, you've got to have a track record. You've got to be making money in order for them to, because nobody's like, you know, I think you've got talent. Mm. I think I'll take a chance on you. That doesn't really happen, does it? <laughs> I think about the, uh, when I first moved to LA, I wanted to join SAG, now SAG after. And there was something about that double uh, chicken or the egg. It's like, you have to get work to get in SAG and you have to get SAG to get work. Right. People do it and they, they find a way. And I think today of, today's, uh, it's not easier, but there's so many more opportunities, especially right. in Los Angeles, or you've got a, a pocket phone that has a, uh, a smartphone that you can record on. It's. You're ready right now, not to submit, but to work on getting to the point. Does that right. make sense? It does, okay. actually. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. People got to learn to use just the phone and not go hog wild in all the equipment. <laughs> plug and plug and plug and plug. Yes. If you're just joining us, our guest is Roy Samuelson. You hear him everywhere on all sorts of stuff. And if you've got a question for him, and I'm sure you do, uh, put it in the chat room. Jack Daniel, 
While he is hiding over at his own studio tonight, because he's now waiting for all his updates, um, throw it in there. He'll pass it on to us. And in our next segment, we will ask your questions of Mr. Samuelson. Let's talk about social media for a second. Uh, you know, I've, I've always said, and I'm sure you guys have heard me say this before, I thought I knew everybody in voiceover. You know, just in, you know, we've been, George, George and I have been doing this show for almost eight years now. And oh. we thought we knew everybody. We've been to every conference and we knew everybody. And then I came to Los Angeles and I started looking at, at talent rosters, you know, for different agents. Like, who's this guy? Who's this guy? Who's this? Who's that woman? I don't, I've never heard of her. Yet they're on the agency rosters. So I always had this theory that perhaps those that are on social media that I all know aren't working as much as these guys in L.A. because they're not hanging out on social media. They're working. Hmm. But I, I take it you've, you, when social media came about, you started to use it effectively. Or at least you're learning how. And how do you do that? I'm just learning. I just am learning. And uh, it's exciting. So I, I can't come from a place of experience. But I do know that one of the more influential reasons why I'm on social media is I heard a, a producer talking specifically about actors where they do take into consideration the social media count, like how many followers and such. That was a that was a wake up call. Right. Do you think that have you attempted to do that? Do you see any uh, results from that? I maybe have a hundred followers. Okay, all right. That's uh, not helping so you quite yet. It's not helping <laughs> me, but by paying attention to the people who are doing it, I do sense an authentic voice. That voice is not literally their voice, but their the way that they approach social media. There's a there's something that does work. Yeah, but you got to find out what it is, and maybe it's whatever it is that works for you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're I mean we're trying to figure it out ourselves. I mean, we've been we've been doing this show and and promoting it using social media for a long time, you know, oh, since you, you know, since you know, social media was just smoke signals. <laughs> and uh, you know, and, and it there are different things you try and then of course they they throw another monkey wrench in the way, right, George? It's like, oh, all right, now they want it to do, want us to do it that way. New algorithms, new rules, yeah. new restrictions, new fees. Exactly. It's constantly changing. Yeah. So you still send faxes? Uh, no, my wife does. Uh, it's a very effective way. No it, one uses it, it them is. anyway. I was really disappointed when they canceled the sending. You couldn't send any more Western Union. Uh, <laughs> full stop. Oh. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, Telegrams? Yeah, Telegram. Yeah. Oh. What was what's that? About 15, 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah. I think you still get moneygrams. Moneygrams. You know? yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I used to get moneygrams from a client in Pakistan. It was all written in Arabic. Imagine oh. me going into the supermarket and going, you can't. <laughs> wow yeah that was yeah that works, but yeah. social media is you know really where it's happening everybody's now moving to instagram mm. facebook seems to be fading as part yeah i i don't know of anybody that's really gotten voiceover work from being on facebook it's great for finding old friends and stuff mm -hmm. like yeah, that Yeah, it's for networking with your peers maybe right. but keep booking I, I would love to hear from people who actually book directly as a result of being on Facebook, mm. really. being clients finding them. I yeah. love that cat video you posted. Will you do a voiceover for me? <laughs> just just doesn't seem that to make That political rant sense. really yeah. got me oh, motivated. Yeah, that, <laughs> I totally agreed with that. Uh, you were talking about your team and talking about teamwork. Um, how did you assemble your team? I mean, did they assemble it for you? Or you're like, I need you, I need you, or... How did that work? Uh, it's it, it's another evolution. I think there's uh, um, obviously the agent and the manager. They do a specific role. They give me auditions. They send me out on jobs. They uh, they do that. Um, I'm also part of. Uh, I've got a business manager to help with uh, the numbers, and that's something that I've had a lot of resistance to at first because I thought I should be able to to manage my numbers and and I. I knew how to do it. I just wasn't doing it. So by having them on board. That was a big step, I think, to be able to to know that they were taking care of it, and I would watch what they did, and make sure everything was was working the way it needed to. But um, yeah, by so that was a that was a pretty big step. And how does that work? I mean, you're saying you're you're getting auditions from your manager and your agent, or is your manager working with your agent? Oh, or gotcha. Is it a is it a troika sort of thing? <laughs> I mean, how does that all work? Um, I was uh um yeah. So the uh, the manager and the agent work 
kind of in tandem together. Um, I also have a, a business manager that handles the the numbers. The so that's uh, that's that. But as for the the manager and the agent working together, there's the occasional time when I get the same audition from both, and um, it's already pre understood that my agent is the flagship, so it defaults to the agent, and that's something that is just respected. Mm-hmm. Once again, we're talking with Roy Samuelson. You got a question for him? I'm sure your questions are filling your head right now. Jack Daniel is toting them all down, and we'll get to them in just a couple of minutes. Um, one of the things, we were just talking about teamwork. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people don't understand that, you know, as voice artists or voice artists or voice actors, people look at this as an art form, but it's a business. When did you realize that, this is a business and I need to approach this in a, in a business type of way. Uh, pretty much every morning. Yeah. It's still, <laughs> it's still a reminder that I need. Um, I think the seeing the business side and again, uh, combining the seeing the, the numbers from the business manager, being able to see, Oh, here's what I made this month or here's what I made last year. How is that different than previous years or previous months and being able to sync up with, uh, there's something different happening now. What's, Oh, I'm I'm going in this direction now. Maybe I need to focus more on that. One of my um, friends is a, a cameraman and also a director, and he used the example of it's not a juggle where you're constantly juggling balls, but it's more like uh, pushing um, a little toy in the in the sand. And when this toy gets stuck, oh, this toy is stuck. Well, let me try pushing this toy. Oh, this this toy is moving. I'm going to keep pushing that. So there's a there's a friction <laughs> that, that kind of stops this and keeps this moving. So if this is moving this one, then let's focus on that. Let's see how that goes. Yeah. It's a little, it's a little less uh, focused or goal oriented, but it definitely goes with the flow of what's actually happening. What do you find is the stuff that you do primarily? Although, like we said, you're, you're doing things all across the board. It must just keep you very busy. I love descriptive narration. And that's something that I had just learned about maybe five years ago. Tell us about it. Uh, it's a special audio track that goes on top of a TV show or a movie. So it's uh, specifically for the blind or visually impaired, uh, the low vision. And uh, people can turn this track on and hear uh, a narrator explain what's happening on the screen. So he puts down a coffee mug. Uh, oh, my she... gosh. I heard, this autumn... I heard this the other day, maybe a week or two ago. I, it just was playing, it's and I and I didn't know why. I didn't notice turning it on. It was just playing, and I'm going, "Is this like a special uh, DVD bonus or <laughs> what is going Easter on?" Egg. I'm hearing every. Well, I mean, it was like uh, it was um, Big Bang Theory or something, and I'm and I'm like, "Is this a special?" Like I had no idea that this existed. I just stumbled on it, so it's fascinating to know that that's something that's a niche that you're doing yeah it's uh and that's a great example with the the dvd extras you know when the, the director or writer kind of talk over it it's, yeah. it's very similar to that and it's also similar to uh closed captioning except instead of for for uh people who are deaf it's for people who are blind so there is a and it's so annoying when it's turned on and you don't want it it's right. so annoying because you're yeah, you're seeing that. what's happening and you're hearing what's happening and it it just kind of doubles up and spirals into this annoying thing but not only for blind and low vision people, but it's also great for commuters with the popularity of podcasts and audiobooks. You got a favorite show like Big Bang Theory, you're stuck on the 405. You can turn on audio description and experience the full audio of the original, plus hear someone talking about what's happening. I take it it's like interspersed carefully between lines and stuff, or it's really on top of the, the dialogue. It's a pre-written script that does go between the dialogue in most in most cases. There's very few exceptions to that. And it's that's the most as, exciting part. It's almost as though you're reading a script and you're reading the, what do you call it, the treatment? Where you see the direction or the setting. Sort or of like the screenplay, he, he the, the teleplay. A, he picks yeah. up a mug and offers her a drink or exactly. something like that. And it's written in italic. It's like you're reading the italicized part. Exactly. You're not <laughs> yes. supposed to read that. That's yeah. not the character. But exactly. that's what the job is. Right. So I'm, yeah, cool. it's kind of like the exact opposite of everything that voiceover people do. Far out. Cool. You have your own home studio. Mm -hmm. What do you got in your home studio? Ah, I have, um, I've got a whisper room that's uh, four feet by six feet. And one side is stand up and one side sit down. So oh, you cool. got a microphone in each end. Yeah. Cool. Um, the sit down is a is a road. That's mainly for the audio books, and the stand up is a, um, a bluebird. Ah, yeah, bluebird. Ah, hey there. Very similar. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Great That's a fancy one. Yeah. Well, you know, only the best for this show. <laughs> yes. Uh, once again, we're talking with Roy Samuelson, who does everything. You know, also probably does his own plumbing. Uh, and uh, if you want to you know. ask him a question, now would be a great time to throw it in the chat room and Jack Daniels get it to us. And we'll get to those questions right after this. So don't go away. Well, hello there. Hi, I bet there. you weren't expecting to hear did, some um, big voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat. Yeah. Yeah. This is yes, no, that's okay. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. All righty. Harlan Hogan's been our sponsor since March 22nd, 2011. He must have seen that we're talking to the right people because he knows that his great products are going to be seen by you by watching this particular show, and we appreciate that. But what great products he has over there. Mostly it's... The stuff that he really wants you to take a look at is his his signature series stuff, the VO1A microphone, a great microphone at a great price point. One of the few microphones, maybe two or three, that were literally designed for recording voiceover work. Uh, it's tuned just the way Harlan wants it for for both male and female voices. It sounds great when you use it right as it is with any particular microphone. And uh, it's at a great price point. So make sure you go over to VoiceOver Essentials and check that out. But he's got other stuff as well. He also has the Harlan Hogan Voice Optimized Headphones. And he's got a new version of it, a brand new version that's been improved, better ear cups. It's more flexible. It's more comfortable. And when you walk away from your, from your board, plugged into your headphones, the cord pops out. It doesn't just get yanked out. And then you're like trying to solder it. And like, I don't know how to do this, but just plug it back in and it works. Great pair of headphones designed for voiceover, very flat response. So you hear exactly what it is you recorded. And there's only one place you can get these things. And that's to go over to voiceoveressentials.com. So why don't you go do that right after this show? Stay on the page, but go way down to the bottom. There's a picture of Harlan talking into his Porta booth. Pro, uh, and click on that and go see all of the amazing deals he has right now. I think he's got like Cyber Monday still going until midnight. So if there's a great deal, get in there right now and get all the stuff that you need, especially the VO1A microphone and the Harlan Hogan voice optimized headphones. They're great. Go over there, buy them, get them for, you know, for your spouse and say, can I borrow those? Be a great, great Christmas present. Thanks, Harlan, for being a great sponsor, and we look forward to having him in 2019. You're watching VOBS.TV. I don't know why. It's crazy what they do here. I think I'm going to go somewhere else and have a cheese sandwich. And we're back with Roy Samuelson, and uh, we've got... Uh, we'd like to hear what you, when you were talking about descriptive narration. Can we see an example of that? Alan! Alan! Alan runs past the security stop. The guards stop Joe and she breaks free. Hugh, John, and Peter show the guards their identification. In the research hut, Joan watches Alan dump decrypted messages onto the desk. The others arrive. That is so cool. There it is. Who really knew? Neat. Hopefully we don't get pulled down for sharing that on the internet. <laughs> it's, a, it's a sample. It's a sample. It's a sample. I don't really work on that. It's not, a, it's not a real thing. All right. Let's see what kind of questions we got from sure. our audience yeah. here. Jack Daniel asks, uh, Roy, some of us in the chat room listen to your demos. They sound great. First, 
Who did you do them with? And second, do you make a point of showing off your range? Can you comfortably cover quite a lot of terrain in terms of age and style? Mm. Love your sound. Oh, oh thanks, Jeff. Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I went with, uh, for the commercial demo, originally I went with Compost Productions. And uh, I think the commercial demo that's there is an assembly of some actual spots that I pieced together just to give, to give a sample. Uh, the promo was with Jeff Howell. Ah, and, yes, um, one of the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this descriptive narration I, I put together. All right. George? I got one here from Paul Stefano. Did Roy focus on getting more descriptive narration work, or did he just find it found him? Or, yeah, did it find you? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. Um, I think it was a combination. Originally, it found me, and when I found it, I started pursuing it, uh, uh, bludgeoning my way into the, the work, tenderly, of course, but uh, it was definitely something that felt like a right fit. So over the course of uh, a very long time, I made myself available and, and stayed in touch with, uh, with the company. And a follow-up to that from Paul is, what genre have you not cracked yet that you'd like to try? Ah, great. Uh, specifically with descriptive narration, I'm definitely doing the action, horror, scary stuff. And uh, I've done a few IMAX kind of wondrous, exciting, kind of distant things. I'd like to do comedy. I think specifically with descriptive narration, there's a, uh, the spotlight is definitely on the show, and I'd like to see how, how that would work with, uh, with what I do. All right. Sonny James has an interesting question. This yeah. is one I struggle with all the time because it's like, I'll find, you know, I get up in the morning and it's like, oh, I got to do this one. <laughs> um, you know, do I use my rough morning voice, my just after coffee voice, or maybe I should like actually warm up my voice, <laughs> uh, which I somehow seldom do for some reason. Mm. You know, although unless I'm singing as I'm walking out of the house and... Uh, but what's your, your vocal warm up to routine? My vocal warm up. It's, uh, it's something that I actually do throughout the day. I've practiced a lot of, uh, breathing exercises. Um, uh, there's one particularly called four, seven, eight, which was supposed to help you sleep at night. But, uh, just by practicing it throughout the day, I'm able to kind of hold my breath and maintain the airflow and, and such. Um, there's also, uh, I'm cutting back on coffee. That's not really related to a warm up, but all those clickety clacks that happen in the morning after a nice cup of coffee, that doesn't work well. So uh, I've, I've started to cut coffee out. How do you survive? <laughs> I've started to cut okay. coffee out. Right. But it's, it's, you know, I, I drink some tea and I'm, I'm associating, you know, this kind of goes back to what we were saying earlier. There's something about habits and good habits and bad habits. Not that coffee is a bad habit, but specifically for the work I do, it's not helpful. Mm -hmm. So... I look at that and say, oh, here's something that's not helping what I do. So let's find something else that might not be as bad. And tea works. So how can I appreciate tea every morning instead of appreciating coffee? So I'm kind of like training my brain to appreciate something a little different that's actually going to help my career. Wow. It's like testing, take, taking wine tasting. It's peppermint, chamomile. And there we go. It's actually probably more varieties of tea than there are yeah. coffee. Yeah. There's yeah. A, a book I'm reading called Atomic Habits by uh, James Clear, and it talks about how to create habits and how to break bad habits. And it's just a crystal clear, straightforward approach, and I'm really enjoying that. All righty. George? Yeah, this one comes in from Devox, one of our regulars. You mentioned being from central Pennsylvania. Where exactly, he says. <laughs> what advice do you have for people living in such areas? I think when he means that, by, by that he means flyover states. Um, as far as networking, finding work locally, and establishing and running workout groups and that kind of thing. Uh, Altoona, Pennsylvania, uh, which is close to State College, if that matters. Yeah, it's between State College and Pittsburgh. Kind yeah, of. kinda. It's like kinda. maybe a hundred miles from Pittsburgh. So yeah, it's mm -hmm. pretty it's pretty close. Uh, and now with the internet, it's uh the opportunities I think are they're a little different, but I still think the the opportunities to network, you're watching this show. I think that's a great thing. I mean the the work that you guys do and the people that you interview, if I had that access, I, my goodness, I love it. <laughs> I'm watching it. The the learning never stops. Um I think the, the the question was focusing on ways to to create that community in your 
you know, your small town, town but oh. I think you were already, you'd kind of already gone, said goodbye by the time this I career stayed. Is, is that true? You were already, yeah, had moved out of Altoona before you really pursued this. Yes, yeah. So you never had that chance to try to start a network. Yeah, and I misunderstood the question. You're right. Yeah, but that's that's um, okay. But it could be, even in the small school that I went to, we put together an improv class, and we would just play around. Go. And I think, you know, the gyms in Los Angeles where you go to work out, uh, I'm talking literal gyms. Yeah. Are of which there are many. Of many, yeah. It's like Gold's Gym at Venice. That's the epitome. Mm-hmm. But in Altoona, there was, a, there was a gym to go to. So if the opportunities in the small town aren't there, why not create it? Even if it's just one or two of you, you've got a, you've got a, a way to work together. And I think there's something really valuable in, in being in person. All right. It's a great question. Thanks for clarifying yeah. that. Sure. Uh, T-Man asks, and we sort of talked about this a little bit. He says, can you describe your process with descriptive narration? Are you pausing the recording or just straight through? Watching time code, uh, you know, obviously, is the script on the screen or is it on paper? And you're like, eh, eh, eh. yeah, it's definitely, uh, 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 no, okay. it's definitely yeah. that. So I, I look at a, a screen, and below that is a, a music stand with a script that I just carefully turn the pages. Uh, we will get to uh, tablet readers at some point, but in the meantime, you know, the sound of the the page turn has to be timed just right. But it is pretty much live, so. Uh, I can do a, a TV show that's an hour long in pretty much an hour. It's 45 minutes long and give and take some some pickups that have to happen, uh, plus anything else that the director and the engineer need to adjust. Um, and it requires a very simple voice. It doesn't require any, it's like you, it's, hey, this is happening, this is happening, that sort of thing. It's totally relaxed and conversational. That's my favorite part. It's uh, the spotlight is definitely on the story, and it's not on me. So if I'm projecting and doing my voice, yeah, you're it takes, distracting from it, it takes from, away. Yeah. yeah. So and if I'm doing a really sad scene and I'm describing it like a vicious, you know, it, <laughs> it, it takes people out. Right. So there are very very subtle nuances, just tiny little adjustments that that have to be made. Uh, and yes, there are. It's uh, it's time code based. So my script has cues, whether it's time code or uh, the last few words of a character's line, or uh, there could be an audio sound, a gunshot, a, uh, a car screeching. Uh, it could just be picture up. All right. Well, thank you all for your questions. We really appreciate it. Tell me what you're working on right now that, you know, you haven't signed an NDA on that you can <laughs> tell us about. Oh, that's a tricky one. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I got to say- What that- type of stuff? Um, uh, again, the descriptive narration is the big focus right now. So there's, uh, there's a few feature films that are out right now and another one's coming out in a few weeks, which I'm really excited about. And, uh, and I'm on a few TV shows, uh, a handful of TV shows with uh, descriptive narration. So that's, uh, that's where things are happening right now. All right. Well, thank you so much for being with us tonight. Oh, thanks well, for having me. It's been a pleasure to see you again. Oh, good to see we'll, you. We'll see you here in the neighborhood. We'll probably run into each other in the park or something. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I know you. Hey, wait a uh, Roy Samuelson, where can they get a hold of you if they want to talk to you? Oh, yes. Uh, I've got a website, but I guess the best way is social media. On most everything, it's Roy Samuelson, all one word. Facebook is Roy Samuelson Biz. Oh, separates you from the rest of the Roy Samuelsons. (laughs) There was a guy back on, uh, what is it, uh, the last social media, uh, MySpace, it was like he was only friending Roy's. (laughs) And I can't find him because he searched for Roy, then... That's one of my biggest challenges. That's, that's my maybe that's my goal for 2019. They find the guy find, from MySpace that was running all the roids. Can, is MySpace still even on? Who no, knows? I don't. I, probably maybe got it absorbed is. by something. Anyway, <laughs> right. Thanks for being with Thanks. us. Yeah. All right. Uh, George and I will be right back. And uh, got any other things you need to find out about? We'll tell you about it right after these. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected 
respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. And we're back here on VoiceOver Body Shop. Thanks again to Roy Samuelson. It was great. That was yeah. lots of good information there. And, uh, you know, we want to continue to bring you all this great information and bring it to you in a succinct manner. And, of course, we have a survey. And we, we do. really would like you to take the survey. What do you want to see on our show? Uh, what do you want to hear about? Uh, those sorts of things. What can we do to make the show better? What can we do? Is the time slot good for you? You know, things like that. Things that you think that could help us do a better product. We're going to be definitely making some changes. That we have some changes come January 1. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So you'll be seeing that. But, yeah. Uh, Actually, January 7th. January 7th, to be exact. Yeah. Exactly. January 1st is New Year's Day. Yeah. We won't be doing it. We did that last year. We did, We had we? a great New Year's party here last January year. January 1st is New Year's. No, January it's, 1st it's, is the 2nd. There's no, wait a minute. I'm January confused. 1st is New Tuesday. Year's Day. Yes. So, it's a Tuesday, yeah. Yeah, so it, it's New Year's, New Year's Eve. Eve is the show. On, right. the 30, on the 31st, so we won't be doing the show. As a matter of fact, we will be off the last two weeks of the year because... Christmas Eve. Christmas New Eve Year's is the 24th, which is a Monday, and then yeah. New Year's Eve is a Monday. Mm -hmm. So we won't be there. Uh, but we are going to... It's going to give us some time to really retool things just a little bit and make it a little nip and a little tuck. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, what's going to happen. Lots of sewing and stuff <laughs> like that. Uh, but we do have people coming up for the next couple of weeks mm -hmm. that we know about. We know that Jonathan Tilly, we have an interview with Jonathan Tilly that uh, we recorded a couple of weeks ago. Uh, oh, yeah, he was in town, right? Yeah, he was in town, but he couldn't come in. Mm -hmm. So we've recorded a great interview with him, and he talks, talks about Instagram and using social media and what you really need to do for marketing. And he'll get you all hooked on this Instagram challenge that even my wife is doing for her new product and stuff. So that's one you really don't want to miss. And Yeah, uh, especially because even a year ago, I think we were all probably looking at each other and going, what does Instagram have to do with voiceover? What does a visual medium where we post pictures and memes and videos have to do with voiceover? Well, you're going to find out yeah, from Jonathan. Yeah, he's, he's really using that. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's next... That is December 3rd. December 3rd, yes. First night of Hanukkah is December 2nd. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it won't we'll be in a festive mood next week because yeah. it's a festival. Yeah. Um, and then we've got a couple more great guests coming up in uh, the middle of December, and then we'll be gone till the end of the year it's because be... you and I need to sleep every now and again. <laughs> it's going to be over before we know it. <laughs> I know. It'll be 2019. Oh. Well, where did 2018 go? It was just, it was, it was 120 degrees in my backyard, and then suddenly it's November. I'm ready to so, close the door on 2018 and have a nice fresh start for 2019. I think that's a great idea. And as we see yeah. the sun setting on 2018 right behind us. Uh, I bet we've had a few donors this week. And who might we they have, be? We have a lot of familiar names because we got folks that donate every episode, which, you know, thank you. Not necessarily, Appreciate thank it. you. We've got Tracy H. Reynolds, Andrew Kaufman, Eric Aragoni. You know those names because we have said them week after week. Patty Gibbons, uh, she donates sustainingly on our website through PayPal. Uh, my dad. Thanks, Dad. Thanks, yeah, George Sr. Appreciate it. Um, also, we've got Brian Page, another regular donor, and Amanda Fellows. Uh, we've also got... Going down the list, because we've got there, a there lot. It is. Thomas Pinto. Tom Pinto. There's that name Whose name again. got mentioned a lot last yes, week. Yes, it Shelly she and Shelly Avellino voiceovers. So thank you very, very, very much. We really, really appreciate it. Thanks for the donations. Alrighty. One of the other things we have is a mailing list, mm -hmm. you know, which is going to become increasingly important come the first of the year, um, because we, you know, we there are certain things we want to try. Like, we'd like to do paid webinars. Any specific subject that you'd like to learn about, we're going to use the green screen here, and we're going to teach you some of the finer points of what goes on in, you know, voiceover technology and specific subjects. 
And if there's a subject you'd like us to do a webinar on, let us know. It might be a good thing to put down in the survey. It would be. Actually, we're, we're going to retool that survey. Thanks yeah. for reminding me. I'm, okay. Would you retool the survey? <laughs> yeah, you got it. All no right. problem. <laughs> uh, but the mailing list, how do they get on the mailing list? Right on the website. You can sign up for the mailing list right on vobs.tv. There's a little box you can fill out at the bottom somewhere on the screen there, and uh, you can get signed up and uh, not miss what we're going, what's going on, what's new, what's happening uh, around here. It's at the very bottom oh. of the page. Just subscribe. subscribe. What yes. a concept. we got over 530 people on that list. Oh, that's great. Yeah, and it grows every week. Very good. And you guys actually open the emails we send you. It's so cool. And we promise not to spa spam you. Yeah. Uh, hey, show us your booths. Uh, this is not a voiceover booth. This is a beautiful forest primeval scene. It was a vacation not in weekend. Flames. Yeah. Maybe maybe you got to actually leave your booth, and this is what you were looking at over it, the weekend yeah. instead of the four walls of your booth. So. Yes. But we'd love to have your. It's really fun having the backdrops of your studios in our studio. Right. It's, it's, a, it's a lot of fun for us, and maybe it is for you if you send it in. Yeah. Landscape, please. Landscape, Landscape. not Landscape. portrait. That's right. All right. <laughs> Important to know. Uh, yeah, show us your show us show us your voiceover shrine. Mm -hmm. I think that's the best way to describe it. Um, you need help with your home studio? Where do you go? We got two places: GeorgeTheTech.com, where we got cyber. Oh yeah, well, there it is. GTT 2018 EOY. Right there. We got that coupon code for twenty five percent off till December second. And we've also got Dan over at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Mm -hmm. Just check it out, see what we can do for you, which is teach you how to do this right, because we know what it's supposed to sound like. Yeah. And where to spend your money, too. Absolutely. You know, and the best place is probably with us because we'll save you thousands of dollars in mistakes and a couple hours. Hundred, yeah, a couple hundred bucks spent here will save you. Saves you thousands yeah. elsewhere. And Russell's. hours of mind numbing confusion. Mm -hmm. And wasted hours on forums. Yeah, get away from there. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, you've got Instagram. I am. I'm on there as George the Tech. And uh, haven't been that active on the last week or two, but. Um, there's a, there's a Get few things on, on there. Get back on it. You gotta be on Instagram. No. I gotta no go. Gotta do it. it. Gotta yeah. do it. Right. At George the Tech. We do have a at voiceover body shop on Instagram as well. Again, I, I'm not in the habit of posting on there regularly. You have to teach me some, how. I'm going to put some behind the scenes. I got a big video clip of Dan that I'm going to put on there tonight, actually. Uh -oh. All righty. <laughs> I wonder what that one's about. Uh, let's see here. Oh, you've got your geek podcast. Yes, if you, Audio really, geek podcast. if you really like going down the rabbit hole for an hour and a half or more sometimes of tech and studios and engineers and all that kind of stuff, then subscribe to the Pro Audio Suite uh, podcast and uh, take it, give it a listen. I think we have a lot of fun on there. Right. Uh, also, if you want to be in our, our studio audience, because we have room for you in here. We do, we do. Uh, and uh, one of the things we can do is allow you to be here. And in order to do that, you have to be in the greater Los Angeles area to be here on a particular Monday night. Write to us. Tell us when you're going to be here. And uh, <laughs> there's our empty couch. It looks I, so it, lonely. It's lonely. Guys, come on down. There's room <laughs> out there. Uh, if uh, you want to be here, write to us at the guys at VOBS.TV and say audience and give us a date. And if we do happen to be doing a show that night, we will invite you in. Give I you love a secret it. handshake, the code to get in. And mm -hmm. I love the irony that our, our audience camera is working. Yeah, but then and it's empty. nobody there. It's just a couple of pillows and my microphones and stuff. Uh, let's see here. Um, what else is there? Well, That's we need to thank our it. sponsors. Yeah. Because without them, you know, this would just be a white page. Yeah. Static. Exactly. Is it really <laughs> static anymore on... Uh, you know what? I, I do see static. Really? Sometimes I'm browsing Facebook. Right. And depending on what I'm on, maybe it's my old iPad or something. Right. Some of you have a video. Right. And it's just literally static. It's just a box with static. It's the weirdest thing. 
All righty. Well, we do need to thank our sponsors, yeah. like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VO to go go. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And J. Michael Collins Demo. Thanks, guys. We can't do it without you. But we also can't do it without the Dan and Marcy Leonard this Foundation studio. for the Betterment of Live Webcasting. Mm-hmm. Our producer, Catherine Curridan, for getting us great guests like yes. uh, Roy Samuelson. Yes, and she does. We have some great people lined up for 2019. Mm-hmm. So... You, you want to make you, don't go anywhere you know you could just want stay on our page 24 hours a day and wait for the show to come up uh of course jack daniel for chat room duty although be it remotely we love having him here but he does a great job remotely as well mm-hmm. uh he also helps us with our youtube and of course our technical director who has it together she knows what she's doing sue merlino thanks a lot for all your help tonight and getting mm-hmm. us on here and of course lee yeah, penny no. simply for being lee penny all righty. Well, mm-hmm. that's going to do it for us tonight. Uh, happy holidays, guys, uh, as we get into the real meat of the holiday mm-hmm. season. And we know this isn't an easy business. There's a lot you got to learn, especially from the technical end. So you don't you want to learn the technical end so you don't have to worry about it. But once you get it right and get it sounding right, that's the most important thing. And if it sounds right, it is right. Very good. And good and good and that's what we want to hear anyway that's going to do it for us tonight i'm dan leonard and i'm george whittam and this is voiceover body shop or vo bs have a great week everybody we'll see you next monday night